This is Michael Kirby. I was the original chairman of the Australian Law Reform Commission. It was called chairman in those days. These were the days before political correctness enlightenment. The name was changed later to president. So effectively, I was the first head of the ALRC. And even that was different because when the commission was established under the Act uh, setting it up of 1973, it was simply known as the Law Reform Commission. The adjective Australian was added a few years later in order to make it clear which Law Reform Commission was being referred to. I had originally been appointed a Deputy President of the Australian Conciliation and Arbitration Commission. Quite a lot of my practice as a barrister was in the field of industrial relations. I was quite proud to be appointed to the Commission, uh, and I had no inkling that I was going subsequently to be invited to be the chair of the ALRC. Initially, the Attorney General of the day, Lionel Murphy, approached me and asked me if I would serve concurrently as a part-time commissioner of the ALRC in addition to my work for the Arbitration Commission. I readily agreed to that. But Lionel Murphy was not content. He called me up to his chambers and I was accompanied by the noted young Australian barrister Geoffrey Robertson, later Geoffrey Robertson QC. Lionel Murphy asked me if I would accept appointment as chair of the ALRC. I told him that he should get somebody much older and wiser. I was then only 35 years of age. Lionel Murphy would have none of it. He said he wanted somebody who was young, not one of those old fuddy-duddies, as he so rudely described the judges of the time. Anyway, with a bit of persuading, because I was reluctant at first, I accepted the appointment, and so uh, in early February uh, 1975, what had begun as a part-time commission, as a part-time commissioner, um, flourished into full-time commission and chairmanship of the Law Reform Commission. Then came the problem of finding premises for the commission. Uh, Mr. Crotty, Kevin Crotty, uh, an officer of the Federal Attorney General's Department, was assigned to me, and uh, I was immediately removed from the chambers as a Deputy President of the uh, Arbitration Commission. I was placed in an anteroom to what were then the chambers of the Federal Judge in Bankruptcy, uh, Justice Bernard Riley. It was a small room, and into that room had to be packed myself, uh, my associate, uh, Bill Kirk, uh, and uh, my secretary, uh, Mrs. Uh, Seely, Jennifer Seely. Uh, as well as that, Kevin Crotty was a constant companion, and he took me on a search for the appropriate accommodation for the ALRC. We found that accommodation at 99 Elizabeth Street, Sydney, uh, opposite the building in which the Arbitration Commission was then housed. And so we set about uh, the building of the institutional structure of the ALRC. But what mattered about the ALRC was the personnel, the personalities, the people who soon joined the Commission to be the original commissioners. I still have on my wall, in my chambers, the photograph of the six original commissioners. They were Gareth Evans, later a QC, later a senator, later the Federal Attorney General and Minister in the Hawke and Keating governments, uh, and an outstanding lawyer who is now the Chancellor of the Australian National University. Also in the photograph 
was Mr. F. G. Brennan, later Sir Gerard Brennan, later uh, a judge of the Federal Court of Australia, and later still a justice and subsequently Chief Justice of the High Court of Australia. I think he was put on the commission to give it weight and gravitas. He was a very experienced Brisbane barrister, and he was a great acquisition to the commission, and went on to a most illustrious judicial career, in the course of which he wrote the Marbo decision. The Marbo decision reversed 150 years of land law in Australia and recognised the right of Indigenous people in Australia to uh, the land rights over their traditional land. Another commissioner was Mr John Kane. He was a part-time commissioner and uh, was an experienced Victorian solicitor he subsequently became a Premier of uh, Victoria. Uh, a further commissioner was Professor Alex Castles. Alex Castles was a professor of legal history and a constant source of knowledge about the history of the law in Australia into which our proposals for law reform had to fit. Finally, there was Professor Gordon Hawkins, Professor Gordon Hawkins was a professor of criminology at the University of Sydney. He was a social scientist rather than a lawyer, and he brought to bear in his advice to us a great deal of wisdom uh, and insight. Subsequent commissioners included Sir Zelman Cowan, then the um, Vice-Chancellor of the University of Queensland, he later, of course, became the Governor-General of Australia. Um, Sir Morris Byers, QC, uh, and uh, Mr John Ewans, QC, the former First Parliamentary Council, and many other lawyers of the greatest distinction became Commissioners of the ALRC. Our earliest projects related to complaints against the police, the law on criminal investigation, the law on debt recovery, uh, and uh, many other projects of uh, great controversy uh, and enormous success. The Director of um, Research of the Commission and Secretary was George Brower. Mr George Brower subsequently became uh, the Ombudsman of the State of Victoria, a position from which he has only recently retired. The first full-time commissioner, apart from myself, was Professor David Kelly. Uh, he was subsequently to write the reports on debt recovery, uh, to play a, a large part in the report on privacy, and to be uh, the commissioner in charge of the extremely successful report on the Insurance Contracts uh, Act and associated matters. So they were a remarkable team, it was an amazing time. We lived off the smell of an oil rag in the first uh, few months, uh, but when our uh, commission premises were set up, uh, the whole thing worked like clockwork. And why was that so? It was because we had wonderful employees, great commissioners, and above all, an outstanding chairman.